I remember this. Clean the. It was so safe. Oh my god. Uh, let me see here. Who was harder to face, Lin Dan or Lee Chung, or Lee Chung Wei? I literally couldn't understand how somebody could win against Lee Chung Wei. By the way. People, they have been losing their mind about my surf. Okay. I'm live now. Hey guys, the first proper stream. I have no idea what I'm doing. And apparently also, we can go here. We can react live to stuff. But first of all, let me just check let me just go a little bit more full screen here. But you can hear me fine and everything, right? And I'm following the chat as well here. Hey guys, hey guys. I have no idea how many are watching, but it's great to see people in the chat. TB08888 says that uh, we met in Toronto. Nice to, uh, nice to have met you there. I really enjoyed the trip to Canada, actually. I hope that I can go back very soon. And uh, I can see there is Hugo uh, DK also. Thank you for joining the stream. Pretty good, pretty good. I thought today is just basically me trying to figure all these things out. Um, I actually think this would be pretty fun because we can do different stuff. We can show, I'm just having my coffee. We can react to different stuff from TikTok, Romain just told me. And I think that's a pretty good idea. It was my first time watching Pro Badminton and you have been my coach since 2016. Thank you so much and it, it was a pleasure to meet you all there as well. I hope that I can make it back to, um, to Canada because it was definitely a very, uh, very good trip and uh, I hope I will be back very, very soon. There is Hachiro PH said love from the Philippines, Victor. Love back to you, to the Philippines. Um, I haven't been to the Phil Philippines before so... Uh, I think we should definitely, uh, I should definitely try to go there. I, I know that there's a lot of badminton fans from the Philippines as well, so it would be, um, it would be very good to go. Um, there's one here who probably used Google Translate, if I can uh, go to the Vietnam. Also, actually, Vietnam is one of those countries where I would really much like to go. Um, I haven't been to Vietnam before, but uh, I've heard a lot of good stuff. Daniel, thank you so much for watching me at the 2024 Olympics. I hope that I can make it to the 28th Olympics, um, but we will take uh, one year at a time. When will you be getting a new racket model? I can't say too much, but please stay tuned. Uh, over the next few months, maybe there will be some news, uh, but I can't really say anything official now, but let's see, let's see. Let's see what happens over the next few months. Okay, guys, I think we should do something fun. Let's search for axes. Oh my god, a great profile here. Ah, this one we don't want to watch. Let's see. Many of them are uh, remains edits I can see. Let's see here. Finally, the BWF Oi. World Tour Final in Hangzhou. I'm actually looking forward to go back to the uh, to Hangzhou later this year. It's a pretty cool city and a pretty good uh, good place to play as well. Pretty happy guy. Hey, they spelled my na name with C. Tell that guy that my name is spelled with K, please. Five titles in the pocket. Some money for divers. Bro, Romain, did you make this and spell my name with C? That cost a baguette. <laughs> Romain, you owe me a baguette. He's French. That's the joke, guys. Every time he spells my name with C, it's one baguette. Or oh, uh, pan a chugla. TB008, uh, the 100cc has been very good for you, as good as the dual C-strike, and you're totally right. 
Maybe my own racket model will also be a 100cc. Who knows? I'm looking forward to uh, to be able to tell you more. I remember this match and I don't want to watch it again. Come no! Come on. Yes. And I'm streaming so I can react live while people are watching. So people are watching me watching my own. And I'm losing this match. To say that the top four in the world right now is... There was... There was so much drift in this hole, and everybody was like, how do we control the shuttle in here? But Lee Chung-Wei didn't care at all. He just played. There was so much drift. Come on. Tall and slow. Let's find another one where I'm actually winning. This is the trick shot, yeah? I remember when I was a kid, I always uh, practiced this uh, trick shot in OBK. Oi. Yes, please. This was my first tournament after the uh, Paris, uh, no, after the Tokyo Olympics. And I didn't win them a golden before, so I really wanted to do well there. It's also played in my hometown, Odense, so... Let's just drop in the chat, quick. What is these things? Hey, yeah, yo. Ni hao, ni hao. Koi shou putong hua. Fei xiang gan xian, ni kan wo de wo de stream. He had Lee Chung Wei. He was so crazy in Malaysia. I can't remember. Is it eleven or twelve Malaysia Open titles he has or something crazy? I'm live right now. I'm streaming on uh, Twitch, so people are watching me watching TikTok. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Sorry, guys. I'm s we're, we're old at home, so we, we, are, we haven't been on the Twitch, um, the Twitch game at all. <laughs> I remember this. Clean the... It was so sick. Oh my god. Bro. I should have brought my skates for this tournament. It was so slippery. Pretty good footwork. One more time. Oi! <laughs> That's so good. There are so many clips out there which I wish, which I'm so happy that they actually recorded. Because it's so funny. It's so freaking funny. Is this Lucy Jar smash? Or is it my smash? Probably Lucy Jar. This was a pretty cool match, by the way. Oh, that's a good smash. Let's see. Funny badminton. Skate Kermel. Funny badminton. Let's see. What is this? Jeez. <laughs> this is the new racket, guys. This is my own uh, own collection. The VA racket. <laughs> Okay, it's pretty crazy. This I can do, but... What is this? Nice. Flexing. Maybe I should try that in a match. There are so much... This dude... I would love to play a match with this guy. I actually texted him on uh, on Instagram and he reacted. He seems like a, a a very good guy. I hope we can make a collab at some point. Pretty jacked. Pretty jacked. Oh, that's pretty impressive. This is a pretty cool, cool angle to watch, actually. You can see the uh, the pace. Ooh. It's pretty explosive. Uh, let's see here. 
Axles and trick shot. Vi ses om lidt. Look. This is how I practiced in the um, when I was a kid as well. I practiced this shot so many times. Sometimes it becomes handy. Can you do the shot? By the way, let me know in the chat. Kong love access and thank you so much. I'm just in the chat right now. Thank you so much. Um, Ksec12 is asking me when is my next tour, and my next tournament will be the Denmark Open. Then I will go to um, Indonesia to take uh, part in the badminton XL, like an exhibition tournament. So if you if you are from Indonesia, please consider going. I think it would be be a very very uh, fun um, fun tournament. So you should definitely go. Um, then there is. Uh, Next one, we we'll see in the chat here. Yeah, it was Govishem. He is so explosive. My, my Natalia, my wife was just here, and she looked at me like I was crazy, talking to you guys. But this we need to. Uh, we need to uh, be good at streaming. Yeah, I put even put some music on. Can you hear this? Is it too loud? Let's check a few of other videos. Hey, this was from the uh, Canada exhibition tour. Actually had a very, very good time. Oh, the shot again. Uh oh, failed the second time. Wait. Actually, pretty good turnout here. I wonder if people enjoy watching, um, watching, you know, like a proper match where you play full power instead of only doing trick shots. I think it can't be just trick shot, trick shot, trick shot, trick shot because it becomes a little bit boring. But if you play in this pace, I actually think it's very, um, you know, very fun for the fans to watch if you make sure to play some good smashes and stuff like that as well. Let's see a few questions here. Uh, did you treat the Olympics differently than regular BWF tournaments? Yes, definitely. To be honest, by far the biggest goal for me this year was the Olympics. So, yeah. Uh, I put basically everything into the Olympics and um, the Olympics no matter what it's just the biggest thing like everybody wants to win the Olympics it's by far the tournament with the most importance for all badminton players it's only every fourth year and the fact that the world champs are now every year um, in you know uh, besides in the Olympic year makes it even more special because what they have done to the world championships when it's now played every year is that it loses some of its how can you say importance for at least for me personally and and for other players also even though it's still a world championship but if you have it every year then it's like yeah there's one guy here who asked why i lost um, to Le Lian Xi in China. Well, you lose sometimes, you win and you lose. I think Le Lian Xi played a great game. Um, I was um, had a, a lot of issues coming to China actually, so I ended up arriving very late in the evening before the match. And um, in hindsight, I should, you know, it was, it was I should probably have considered even going. But uh, with that being said, uh, Le Lian Xi was better than me on the day and. Um, that's how it is. Uh, let's see here. Yes, I heard about Vietnam many times. And I know that I have a lot of Vietnamese fans as well. So I really much hope that I can go soon. Let's see here. Uh, there is a... Uh, 
you have fewer chances to win an Olympic medal than winning a world championship. That's very much true. And that's also why the Olympics is just way, uh, way more important uh, than any other tournament. Hey, man, Liquid Roll, thank you so much for, for jumping on the, um, on the stream here. I really much appreciate it. We're just going to try to to do this as a sort of maybe a regular thing. I actually uh, feel way more relaxed doing this than different things. And I think it's pretty fun to be able to react to stuff and all that kinds of things. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, there is actually a very good. Any thoughts about the number of tournaments you have to do each year according to the BWF rules? Isn't that too much? Actually, my thoughts are I, I get that they would try to have tournaments, a lot of tournaments, and also it's a good chance for players to play a lot of tournaments to get a lot of ranking points, and it's great to play around the world. But for me personally, I think the fact that, you know, let's say I'm injured um, and um, or even sick. I was sick in Malaysia Open last year when I withdrew from India Open, right? I was so sick and I basically um, I had stomach issues. I was um, throwing up and stuff like that. And uh, my entire family got sick when I got home and I withdraw from the tournament. They gave me a fine because I couldn't, I couldn't, um, even though I had the doctor's letter from Malaysia Open that I should go back home and get checked because I couldn't uh, prove that I couldn't fly. So they gave me a fine. And even though when you have to go for the tournaments, like the super, the super, uh, for us, the top, I think it's, I can't remember if it's top 10 or top 15, you have to go do media, but the tickets and the hotel you pay yourself and you will get fined if you don't go. So basically you have no chance of, um, of getting any prize money. And also you, you have to pay your, uh, your ticket and your hotel yourself to go do media for, for one day. So those rules and BWF knows this, I think it's totally ludicrous that they don't you know, if they said like, hey, we'll pay your ticket and we pay your hotel for the one night and you come to media, fair enough. I get that. I get that we maybe have to, for the tournament, we have to go do some stuff and stuff like that. But, you know, to, because many of the players, if they're financially don't have, you know, a lot, then to have to go, go to the tournament, you have to, uh, you know, do the media and you have to pay the, the flight and stuff like that yourself. I know that many players maybe have support from the Federation, but still, then it's crazy that BWF they don't uh, they don't give the ticket and uh, and one hotel night or whatever to the players. That's crazy to me, really. Um, and that's also why you see some players they go on court, they play a few rallies, and then they withdraw because they will get the prize. You know, they will get the um, the prize money for the first round. And why not? Then the players think like, hey, why don't I just go play a few rallies, get the prize money? And then, uh, you know, maybe it could cover a little bit of my trip. But for the tournament, that's very bad that the players, they go on court and then just withdraw, even though they know they're injured. They just go on court, they play a few rallies. It, it's not good for the sport. So that's my honest uh, thoughts about it, to be honest. That's a long answer. Um... <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Which victory or tournament win is most meaningful to you and why? The Olympic gold medals are by far the most important to me. And, uh, yeah. There's one here. I feel like Canada is not as big as it could be in badminton because they're not sponsored here a lot and it's always uh, out there, own pocket. But I want to thank you for training with Brian Yang. Yeah, no problem. I think uh, Brian is doing very well, and I also think Michelle Lee has been doing very well, and that's good for the sport. Um, when I went to Canada, it was it was a pretty exciting trip for me to go there because it was um, it was interesting to see how the academies how they instead of working together, I feel like there's a lot of uh, competition between the academies which isn't necessarily a good thing. I get that, you know, there are some financial uh, maybe motivations behind all the things, but in order to grow the sport and produce great players, I think that, you know, the best players and the best academies maybe should work together more in order to create a, a good, you know, environment for the players. Max Tupain, thank you so much for joining the stream. Uh, let me just try to... Uh, 
Let's see here. Do you notice any difference between European, Asian, worldwide terms concerning the skill level in badminton Europe? Um, I definitely think that, you know, if you if you look at Denmark, we're 5.5 million or something like that. Um, in Asia, you know, if you take India, China, Indonesia and stuff like that, what the population are, I think that it's pretty, pretty crazy that Denmark and, you know, you see France also doing pretty well now. I think it's pretty... Um, it's pretty impressive that we can produce so many players at the highest level because obviously, you know, the talent um, in Asia is, is obviously there is way more to choose from um, so that we can be competitive on the top level um, still is pretty, is pretty good. So, of course, with the sport also growing, even in India now and stuff like that, I think in the future we will see a lot of uh, talent from there. I'm pretty sure and the European countries really have to work hard and really have to think about what they're going to do in the future uh, in order to stay competitive because it's only going to be harder and harder. Also, as more money comes into the sport now, I think that, you know, the European countries will really have to support the best players in Europe. They will have to invest a lot in the best players in Europe because now, you know, the uh, Asian countries, you see you see Chinese Taipei over the last few years. Even Japan in the last eight, ten years of my career have really been uh, making big improvements. So I think in order for Europe to be competitive at the highest level, we need to invest a lot in the sport. Otherwise, I'm very afraid about how it will look in ten years from now. Uh, let me see here. Who was harder to face, Lin Dan or Li Chong, uh, Li Chong Wei? I think both, I think actually in the start of my career, you know, when I was still young and coming up, I played Chiang Wei on um, numerous occasions where I literally couldn't understand how somebody could win against Li Chiang Wei because he was so much faster than me. He was so sharp, uh, but but I remember playing him um, at Malaysia Open when I was maybe, I can't remember which year, one of my first years on tour that literally I couldn't lift without him just smashing it in the ground. It was absolutely crazy. I think I lost with 8 and 12 in like whatever minutes. Um, but then as I started to get a little bit you know, older and better, obviously around 2016, 2017, my defense uh, started to, um, to get um, better. And then, you know, I sort of figured out a way how to score points. And obviously also Chong Wei, he got, a, you know, obviously he also got older and I got to my, you know, a better age for me. So, you know, you could you could say that I didn't play Li Chong Wei and Lin Dan at their absolute peak when I was also at my peak. So it's hard to say. Um, Lin Dan was a little bit more, how can I say? He was rally, rallying a little bit more. So I actually felt a little bit better playing against him. Because I could play rallies with him, I could, you know, even though it was really hard to read his shots, but still I felt like I could rally and play, you know, play more. While when I was playing um, Chong Wei in the start of my career, I just felt like every time I tried to lift or play the backcourt, I was just, sorry, screwed. Um, so I actually felt a little bit harder against Chong Wei. Um, hey, Nibo Machine, thank you so much for joining the stream, man. I'm very happy. Memagos asked, how was your recent meeting with Momota? It was very good. Actually, I'm looking forward to, we took some very cool pictures uh, at the um, Innovation Center um, with Yonix. Some very cool pictures, Momota and I, we had a really good time. And obviously it was my first proper time to play, you know, to meet and talk with him a little bit more, even though obviously um, there is still the language barrier there, but we were able to communicate and stuff like that. And obviously there is a huge mutual respect and um, we had a really good time and I'm looking forward for you to be able to see the pictures as well. Um, and we even played pickleball, singles, just for fun. Actually pretty fun if you play singles. Doubles, looks a little bit boring. It's pretty, there is more here on the stream, like more in the chat that I actually, because I haven't really been doing any promotion for my, um, for my Twitch. Pickleball, 
it's like the fastest growing sport in the state right now i think this is pickleball let me show you Actually, what I think pickleball did very well in 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 uh, in regards to um, the league is that they got all these celebrities to to you know they got them to buy the teams, and they um, they um, you know they promoted the league and you know you see like uh, some actors, uh, even some uh, athletes and stuff like that. They owe they you know they they have whatever you know they're part of the. Um, of the tour or they have a team or something like that in the states and i think that was pretty pretty uh you know pretty good of the pickleball to to do that liquid roll i assume you're a gamer as well since you're on twitch the only thing i'm good at gaming is snakes or nokia 30 uh, 33 10 i'm not a gamer at all i actually played world of warcraft when i was younger as well that was pretty fun uh, but I stopped gaming a long time ago. I really don't have any time. Um, Max Two Pain having a good question here. It is was it hard for the few in your family to leave to Denmark and move to the bike region from Germany? By the way, gonna be in Denmark with my kids tomorrow for Christmas holidays. <laughs> yeah. Th First of all, thank you so much for the question and for joining the stream and send my regards to your family. Um, it was actually. It was hard in the start because when we moved, we didn't really have a base here. That being said, we didn't really have um, um, we didn't really have a um, you know an apartment yet and stuff like that, and we needed to fix the visa issues and stuff. But f when we got the apartment and the training started going well and stuff like that, we actually have been feeling very happy here because now in Denmark with the interest, uh, you know, when I started doing real like obviously. Um, how can you say the attention uh, from uh, people and the media and stuff like that for me has obviously been growing and here in Dubai you know badminton isn't that popular you know nobody really knows who I am to be honest um, and we just feel more like a family here we have way more time as a family here because I don't have too many obligations here at the moment only training now streaming <laughs> and uh, training again and stuff like that. So we actually have way more family time here. So it's pretty good. Um, let's see here. Victor, I was very sweating on the game and some of my girlfriends were talking about me because I was sweating and very smelly. Can you give me a till? It's good to smell <laughs> because that means you're working hard and it's good to sweat. Uh, so when you play badminton, it's not a beauty contest when you play badminton. It's about working hard and winning. Who cares if you uh, sweat and smell when you play? As long as you shower afterwards, then you're good. <laughs> Bro, if your girlfriends are, are complaining about you sweating and uh, smelling when you play badminton, they, uh, they don't know the game, bro. It's not a beauty contest. It's about winning. And moving, moving quick, working hard, funny sports. This is a clip for me last year. I'm so bad at golfing as well. Actually, a funny story. A funny story. Um, after winning um, Malaysia Open two years ago, I um, we went for like a short holiday in Malaysia, um, a little bit more south, and we went golfing. Uh, me, PK, and my sister's um, boyfriend. We went golfing. And at this resort, like, you would have a guy, not a caddy per se, but you would have a guy who would following you, he would give you a few tips and stuff like that, and then you, 
you paid for having him with you um, the entire 18 holes, right? And I haven't been, pl I maybe played golf five times in my life. And I had to take, um, you know, when we started out, after he saw the first swing of everybody, he was like, I'm not spending my day with these guys. So next time we turn around, this guy just, we paid for it and everything, but he was just like, screw this, I'm not going to be a part of it. So he just, <laughs> he just left. So we ended up, I, f I we, we used, uh, I, can't, I can't remember how many hours we used on playing 18 holes, but we were so slow and so bad that, that the people behind us, they were like, guys, what, like, what is happening? And we were just like, you can go ahead first, go ahead first. And on the way back with the golf cart, it was, you know, there were some very serious, like, older guys who were playing. And I made a mistake that I reversed the golf cart as he was swinging. And it said, like, the deet, 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 deet. And he made, he made, like, a very bad shot. And apparently that was my fault. So he went absolutely crazy, like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, bro, relax, like... <laughs> Because I made like because I reversed the golf cart like for two seconds, you hit it in the totally wrong direction. So sometimes golf people are crazy. No, we didn't get a refund. And another funny story from that trip was that um, when we came back, like we were missing the driver, the putter, and stuff like that, um, and we were like. We are totally sure that we put all the um, all the golf clubs back in the back, and they were like, "It can't be true. We're missing four golf clubs right now." And I was like, "I'm sure we put it back." And then we went around the the golf course one more time, and we found all of them. Somebody had somebody had just uh, e either me or, or PK or Alexander has just like played one swing, and then without thinking about it, we put it on the uh, on the grass, and then just left. Anyways, who cares about my golfing? Uh, would you ever live stream a badminton training? That's a thing we've been talking about, actually. So we will do it at some point. Just taking it, you know, seeing how it goes and stuff like that. I actually think this was before the Tokyo Olympics. This club is in um, is a school. Like my wife is from there, and uh, this club I'm usually doing my skill sessions in when I'm in um, when I'm in Denmark. Let's see here. There's a lot of people who are just stealing clips, no? It's all mine. By the way, at the Badminton XL tournament, I actually, uh, I don't know if I will play men's doubles, but I hope I will. It would be pretty fun. Let's jump in the chat again. Okay, we'll take a few more questions, guys, uh, and then we will um, call it a day. Going to try to stream again over the weekend, by the way. Maybe Sunday. Hey, man. First time chat by Sis Dexlo. Uh, jeg spiller i Birkerød. Vi er så heldige at have Thomas Leborn og Camilla Søren. Så må de, at de husker dig som lille knejt. <laughs> Fantastisk. Du må hilse Thomas og Camilla rigtig mange gange. Max Tupain is asking, uh, when did you decide to become a professional badminton player and what did your parents think about it? Actually, I was very lucky because my parents, they were really supporting from a young age. And you can say that when I won the World Junior Championships in 2010 in Mexico as the first European ever, 
I was a little bit fortunate that everybody believed that maybe I had the tal uh, talent to be very good. But when I won the World Junior Championships in 2010, that was when I was able like to get a good contract. And it was also the, you know, that was the time where I decided, okay, uh, there is actually a, a proper chance of me on making it on the senior circuit as well. Because if you look at other winners from the World Junior Championships, usually they will do well also, like at least maybe 60-70% of them. Uh, there's one here. Did you ever think your height could be a challenge for you? Actually, yes. And that's also why I make, uh, you know, I really much try to make the point that you have the body you have and you can't change your body. So rather than focusing on the things you cannot change, you should try to see your height as an advantage, work on your weaknesses, but don't forget your strengths as well. And I remember when I had to make a new passport when I was around 16 years old, I was starting to get very tall. Um, and actually I felt a lot of pressure because people were starting to talk about that I was too tall for men's singles. They said that, oh, I can't move uh, fast enough in order to play men's singles at the highest level and stuff like that. And I felt a little bit, you know, a lot of pressure during that time. But then, you know, I decided to, to turn it around and say, hey, you know, my competitors, they don't have a chance to really have, you know, to practice against a guy with my height. Um, maybe I will have a big advantage if I can still make my defense very good. So I worked a lot on my flexibility. I hired my own private um, strength and conditioning coach where we made a really tailor-made uh, program for me a lot of exercises to stay mobile as a tall person and stuff like that. So I have a lot of knowledge about how to, um, you know, make yourself a very good player as a, even as a tall guy, um, because I've worked with very good people. And, um, you know, basically I just turned it around and said, you know, Hey, you know, I can't change this. So why not make it a big strength? And that's one of the things I'm very proud of is that even though I felt a lot of pressure, when I started to grow tall because not really many players on my height has been making it, uh, you know, so far as I have. So um, I think that hopefully I have shown that even though you're tall or short or whatever, but if you're tall, you can still make it if you work hard and you work the right way. And obviously, you know, you, of course you need some talent and stuff, but yeah. Um. Wildwigs is asking about the back. I think it's very important that you work on your core and, and that you work on your mobility and you check your psoas as well. Check, check your psoas and your um, TFL area uh, with a physio to see if you're very stiff there. And um, your movement, movement mechanics is very important as well. Okay, guys, we go for five more minutes. Uh, I'll just maybe, you know, around the... If you have problems with your back, uh, like this one here, these exercises, if you're having back issues, like go, go watch some stretches from the, uh, for the psoas. Um, <laughs> Pedicle writes, my movement mechanic is perfect, bro. I love the, uh, I love the self-confidence, but um, nobody's perfect. Yeah, I can try to link. The guy's called Connor Harris, like this, this guy here. I don't know how to link. How do I do this? Ah, here it is. Yeah write it in the chat these exercises here how do I I'm not able to uh, search for this <laughs> yeah but I can't paste I don't know why I can't paste copy link Why on earth can't I paste? Ah, there it is. There. 
great. Thanks. I think the kids will be home in a bit soon. So I can't go one more hour. Let's see what should we spend the next. Axelson funny fail. Axelson angry. Bro, can we just agree? Have you seen the picture from this match? This was this was tough. He's uh, Ginting still uh, owes me. Um, Ginting still owes me a cup of coffee. By the way, three cups of coffee, I think, for that one. Anyways, that's sports. Sometimes it goes your way. Sometimes it doesn't. That's just how it is. Where is the one from Thomas Cup? People have been making memes out of that. I go down on my knees and I yell and somebody make made like a um, made a made a clip where like fire is coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Case like twelve ask I said like I, I just uh, asked Inting, are you sure you didn't touch the net? And he said, I'm sure I didn't touch the net. And I say, Okay, if you find out you touched the net, then you owe me three cups of coffee and he said, Yeah sure. So that was basically the uh, do you remember when you yelled at a coach for talking? Yeah, it was against Pranoy at the Japan Open. They were yelling so loud from the coaching chair when I was serving, so it was just, and you know, in the heat of the moment, it's just like, sometimes, sometimes I lose my head a little bit, but you know, I think also it shows that, you know, I do this with a lot of passion. Sometimes you do some, t some things on court which, uh, which you don't really, um, you know, which you're not proud of. Nevertheless, that's how it is. Where is the serve against Kodai? By the way, people they have been losing their mind about my serve. And I'm like, first of all, I'm not breaking any rules. I, I I think that I'm not trying to, you know, if you look at my matches, I'm for sure not delaying the game. I'm not taking uh, almost a minute between every rally. Like, uh, you know, sometimes you see in matches where people, they are just trying to slow down the game and stuff like that. And they take, I don't know how long between rallies and stuff like that. That's all fine. But then and people have been, some people in the doubles also have been serving like this, where they go from side to side as well. But... <laughs> People make it sound like at the Olympics that I was winning the Olympics because I was going with my serve, which is not against the rules. And then I have this empire at China Open where he basically just gives a point. It's it's uh, instead of saying you know if the if the empire like in the Olympic final the empire said to me hey serve quicker fine I stopped doing it. But 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 uh, if it's against the rules fine I won't do it. But if it's not against the rule, then and and basically we're talking about one or two seconds. You can like it or not, but it's not like I'm breaking any rules. Like, uh, anyways, maybe people are just having a hard time coping that I won the Olympics. By the way, I'm on my Instagram here, and um, just so you know, like all the. You know the um, the messages I get and stuff like that. I I read most of them, even though I can't obviously answer all of them. But the comments and everything, I I very much appreciate all the support. Um, okay, guys, I think that was it for this stream. I'm gonna be together with my kids now before I will go to my afternoon practice. And um, please say bye in the chat. Let me know if you enjoyed this stream. And 
I very much in uh, enjoyed um, everything here, and uh, maybe uh, maybe let's try to do another stream this weekend if you enjoyed it, and uh, let's try to see if we can uh, up the stream. Thank you so much, guys. I will try to uh, also make a live from the um, live from a training at some point, and uh, thank you to Romain. Please, let's not forget Romain. He basically did all this ready for me uh, he set up the whole thing he worked a lot of hours making this happen so um, it uh, it's all because of him that we're doing this so hey KSAC 12 are you gonna go to the badminton XL in October November oh amazing I will see you there please um, when you see me there uh, just let me know it's you and uh, that you watch the stream. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, to say hi in real life as well. Uh, Stelios94, my next tournament will be Denmark Open. So it will be like Denmark Open, uh, Badminton XL in Jakarta. Then will be Kuma. Then I will do a event in Shenzhen. Event in Shenzhen. Do Ma Moto Masters. China Masters. And then the HSBC World Tour Finals. This is basically going to be the events I will do. Uh, and then we're going on a holiday to the Maldives after the World Tour Finals with the family. So I'm looking forward to that as well. So that's the year from now until um, until uh, 2025. Uh, and please stay tuned. Probably you know when there is news in regards to um, to my. Uh, you know to the next projects which are coming up we can do a stream where i can show some different stuff and stuff like that so hopefully we can grow the community here and uh, we'll see thank you so much guys see you i will jump off now appreciate it see you in the next stream oh bye bye see you in the next one stay tuned